This video will provide a quick demo of downloading and installing Apache Tomcat on a Windows 7 laptop. We'll look at the Hello World example servlet in Tomcat so that you can get a sense of how the Java code in the servlet produces HTML for a web page. When you go to the Apache Tomcat website, you'll see various versions for download. We'll use Tomcat 8.0. Currently version 8.0.3 is the latest for version 8. You will want to download a version appropriate for your operating system. Since I'm using 64-bit Windows 7, that's the version I'll download. It's packaged as a zip file. Since I already have a software directory, I'll just create an Apache Tomcat subdirectory under that and store the zip file there. After it's downloaded, we can extract the contents of the zip file to our Apache Tomcat directory and then remove the original zip file. So now we have an Apache Tomcat directory. We can download and use multiple versions of Tomcat stored there. Let's check our computer's Java situation. That's really important to set up right. Tomcat 8.0 requires Java 7 or later we'll want to double check that the java underscore home environment variable is set to the location of our java 7 jdk directory we can use the echo command in the windows command shell for this purpose we're using the java development kit the JDK because we'd like to experiment and make some changes to the example servlet. Later we may even want to create our own custom servlets. To do that we'll need to be able to compile the Java code in the servlets and produce .class files. The JDK, unlike the JRE, contains the Java compiler and will allow us to do that. If you haven't created the Java underscore home environment variable yet, keep watching as we'll now create a new environment variable named Catalina underscore home. We'll want our new environment variable to contain the directory of our Apache Tomcat installation. So I'm going to drill down into that directory now and copy the path so that I can paste it in soon. To create a new environment variable in Windows 7, I'll right click on Computer and select Properties. On the left hand side, I'll click on Advanced System Settings. And in the Advanced tab, I see an Environment Variables button that I'll click on. You can create user or system environment variables. In the top pane for user variables, click New and add a variable name of Catalina underscore home. Paste the path of your Tomcat installation directory into the variable value field. Click OK, then OK twice more. The Catalina underscore home variable is used by Tomcat scripts to run properly. Let's create a new command window and use the echo command to verify that our Catalina underscore home environment variable has been created. That looks good. Note that if you added a different version of Tomcat to your computer later, it would be easy to edit the value of Catalina underscore home to point to the path of that new version. So back in the Tomcat 8 directory, you'll notice that there are multiple subdirectories. The bin subdirectory is especially important because it contains Windows scripts 
to start Tomcat. Among those, you should see a startup.batch script, startup.bat. This script is used to start the Tomcat server. So we'll start a Windows command shell and run that script now. When you do that, you'll see a new Tomcat console window displayed that provides informational messages about the startup. So now that Tomcat's running, let's test it a bit. When Tomcat started, it automatically exposed a website on localhost, that is my laptop, on the default port of 8080. The way to see that the website is working is to start a browser and I'll use Firefox in this example. The URL that you see here in Firefox includes localhost followed by a colon and then the port number 8080. You'll need that full URL in order to see the Tomcat website. So if you looked at a different port you wouldn't see that. You should see a web page like this with a congratulatory message that lets you know that Apache Tomcat has been successfully installed. You'll see links to information about Tomcat and to some of the management functionality. So now that we have Tomcat running, let's dive into the examples a bit and see how Java is used by this web application server. Click on the examples link, you'll be taken to a page with three links. Since we're interested in servlets for the time being, Click on the Servlet Examples link. There are various servlet examples, but we'll work with the Hello World servlet. When you click on the Execute link, you'll see the web page produced by that servlet. It's a very simple servlet with minimal output. It displays a Hello World web page. So what does the Java look like that runs behind the scenes to produce this output? Let's try to find the Java code for the servlet. It's part of a web application, so let's look in the web apps directory. Inside of that, the example subdirectory looks like a reasonable location. It has a servlets directory, so that looks like we're very warm now. But the servlets directory only contains HTML files. Let's go up a directory to the webenth directory and from there drill down into the classes directory. Ah, this looks much better. The classes directory contains hello world example.java and the compiled byte code hello world example.class. Let's take a look at hello world example.java. We see that this Java class extends HTTP servlet. It has Java code that looks like it's writing out the HTML for a web page that looks like the example we ran earlier. Let's change that Java code so that it modifies the HTML written out for the page. We we'll want to make an obvious change, so let's change the background color for the body of the page from white to red. This should be very obvious if it works. We might think that a change to the Java code would automatically appear when we refresh our browser. So that's our first try. But the page doesn't change even when we refresh. What's happened is that Tomcat is actually using the .class file, the compiled bytecode for a hello world example. So when we change the raw source code, that is the .java file, that change won't be reflected until we compile hello world example and produce an updated .class file. We know how to compile using Java C on command line. Let's try that.
Uh oh. We're seeing complaints about types such as servlet. What's happening is that the servlet class isn't included in the core Java library. So even though our hello world example.java has necessary import statements, the servlet jars aren't being found by the compiler. We need to include those servlet jars somehow. Fortunately, Apache Tomcat comes with the necessary servlet libraries. Those are located in the lib subdirectory of our Tomcat installation. We'll need to add those jars to the Java C class path when we compile our updated servlet. Let's run Java C again, this time adding the class path option with the path to our Tomcat lib directory. We'll be lazy and add an asterisk to that path to pick up all the jar files there in that directory. Ah, that compiles successfully and produces a new hello world example.class file. We should be in good shape now. Will we see the change in background color with our updated.class file? No luck! What we'll do though is to stop the Tomcat server and restart it. Notice that when we close the console window, Tomcat stops and the web browser is no longer able to find the Tomcat site URLs. We can use the startup.bat script to start Tomcat once again. Now when we go to the example Hello World servlet page and run it, we see the red background from our change. Our change to the servlet was successful.